CPT might seem a little bit overwhelming at first to study, but it's actually quite simple if you break it down into four components. Assets, disposals, base costs, and proceeds. I want you to study these sections in isolation, focus on what they are, because when you bring them together, it really is just taking those individual sections and bringing them all together nicely into a calculation. So we're going to start talking about an asset first. Now we've already discussed the definition of an asset, but what I want to talk about specifically here now are personal use assets. And personal use assets are discussed in paragraph 53 of the H schedule. If you sell a the personal use asset or you dispose of a personal use asset, that's both a better term, there will be no capital gains and no capital losses calculated on them. In other words, they escape, they CGT free. With, what is a personal use asset? A personal use asset, first, understand, it only applies to a natural person. A company can't have a personal use asset. So it only applies to a natural person, and it is an asset that was used mainly for purposes other than carrying on of a trade. Other than means not for carrying on of a trade. Right, so something that was not used for trade. So less than 50% of the time used for trade, more than 50% of the time used for personal reasons. So your personal vehicle, your house, your furniture, your clothing, your personal cell phone maybe. Those are all probably personal use assets. But now there are certain assets that we want to tax. Now why do we have personal use assets? Let's actually quickly talk about that. What do you think happens to the majority of personal use asset the value? They tend to decrease. Think about a car. If you buy a car for 100,000 rands, three years later that car is worth 60,000 rands. Right, so if you sell it, proceeds 100,000, base cost 60,000. Furniture, clothing, your cell phone, all of those things that do the same thing. Because you use it, the value goes down. What about your house though? Most of the time that goes up, right? So, how do we get that to be taxed then? The house increase in value. By telling us in paragraph 53 that some assets will not be personal use assets ever. Even if you never use them for trade. So, basically, these are personal use assets that will be taxed. Which will be what? Coins made mainly from gold or platinum, which the market value is attributable to the material that is made out of. Right, so that's a Kruger Rand. The price of gold goes up, the price of Kruger Rand goes up. An ancient antique coin, the value of it will go up because of how, what its age is, not because of the material it is made out of, the gold or platinum. So that will be excluded still, for example. Immovable property, here we go. Probably the most important one, immovable property. So if you sell a house, there will be CDT on it. Aircraft that weighs more than 450 kilograms when empty and a boat longer than 10 meters. If you sell those assets, there will be CDT. Why? Well, maybe the reason is actually because that these assets are typically assets which are owned by the more wealthy people. Right, so it's tax on wealth, basically. Financial instruments, like shares. Okay, so there are a couple of more ones, guys, discussed in the paragraph which you can refer to. These are by far the most important ones. Then, so this means, remember now what it means. A personal use asset means there's no capital gains or losses. Now we say this is not a personal use asset. So what does that mean? It means, thus must calc capital gains plus losses. So if you sell your house, if the proceeds of your house is a million and the base cost, let's make it three million just for example, and the base cost is four million, you will have a capital loss of a million. Okay, that's allowed. But they say in paragraph 15, you can't claim a capital loss for an aircraft that weighs more than 450 kilograms or a boat longer than 10 meters. So these two assets. So they say, if you sell a boat, so remember now, so this means here's my boat. If I sell the boat, proceeds 100,000, base cost 80,000, that's a capital gain of 20,000, that will be taxed. If I sell the boat, 
proceeds hundreds of thousands, base costs 180,000, that is a capital loss that will not be allowed. So capital loss is good for me as a taxpayer because it reduces my other capital gains, so that will not be allowed. So SAR says, we'll tax you if you make a gain, but we will not allow you to claim a loss.